So you've decided that you want to try watercolour painting. Let's just break down how simple that is. It's water plus your painting medium plus your paper plus your brushes. Going to the art store can be a little bit intimidating. You know you want to paint with watercolours, so where do we start? Today in this chapter, we're going to go through the basic list of the tools and materials that you'll need just to set up your basic watercolour station. So first of all, let's start with our brushes. I've got the three that I use the most, and we've got a round brush, which is this one with the point, that's probably the one most people are familiar with. The filbert brush, which has this lovely oval shape, and a square brush. Now all these brushes come in different sizes and I have chosen the medium sort of size for each of those. For the round brush, that's the size 14. For this filbert brush, it's one inch. And for the square brush, we have a three quarter inch here. That's a nice starting point. Another thing that I've got and use all the time is a sponge brush or a foam brush. I lay all of my brushes onto some paper towel because they get wet and they get messy and it's just going to protect your table a little bit. Next up, let's talk about our paints. In the watercolour family, we've got three to choose from. Watercolour, gouache or ink. The point really for me of watercolour paints is that lovely spread that you get where it shoots through the water because the water is your vehicle and that is what makes them different from any other paint that you're going to use. Watercolours come in tubes like this and watercolours also come in pans and the reason I love a pan for a beginner painter is because we've got beautiful colours that have already been selected for us and this is a great place to start. Moving on over here we've got gouache which is very similar to watercolour paint actually but it's, it's more pigmented and that means that you can have a more opaque finish to your painting and it has a touch more body to it than watercolour. And thirdly, my favourite are inks. I absolutely love inks for their luminosity and how quickly they just fly through the water that I put down. They come, inks come in these little tiny pots with a dropper and sometimes I'll put them in pots of their own and just add a little bit of water in so I have a bit more to work with. So that's our basic paints, you know? We've got watercolour paints, we've got gouache paints, and we've got our inks. Try one and start there and then maybe move on to another one. Seems obvious, but water, you know? You're gonna need a lot of it. And I like to have usually a couple of vessels on the go. You can use jars like this one or often I just use takeout containers the little round ones that we all have cluttering up under our sinks anything will do old teacups will do but you know you're going to need quite a few of these you're going to need your palette for many years I just use plates at home much to my parents disgust <laughs> their plate collection was going down and down and down Basically, all you need is a white surface to use as a palette. We've got a larger palette like this as well, which is kind of nice sometimes. But if you're using inks, I think it's really nice to use something with a bit of a dip in it because it keeps it contained and doesn't sort of disappear off or merge together with all the other colours that you have. You can keep things quite separate, which is nice. Alternatively, I'll put them in jars. If I know I'm going to use a lot of a colour, sometimes I like to pre-mix it and pop it in a jar, just so I have a lot to use. So of course, our paper is very important and there are so many different types of paper and we're gonna get into that a little bit later in another chapter. Deciding on your paper size is really such a personal thing. You know, you might wanna work in a tiny sketchbook. And when I travel, I like to take my little sketchbook with me and just do miniature versions of wherever I've been. And if I don't have water or I have something else with me, you know, I use some pool water for this shot that was out of Palm Springs. So, you know, 
you just need a liquid medium, but sketchbooks are a great place to start if you want to start small. Now, this is my kind of go-to size, and I like to work bigger because I tend to paint bigger. I like big brush strokes, and I like to feel loose, and sometimes working smaller can kind of tie us up a little bit into getting tight. And that's fine sometimes. Maybe that's the way that you'll love to paint is delicate little tiny marks. But a really good place to start if you're just a beginner, just picking up paints for the first time, is to buy a sketch pad of paper like this. So a hairdryer is awesome to have on hand if you're feeling impatient or you know you're going to be layering up lots of colors. You can do a gentle dry on the hairdryer for getting things done quicker. You need some masking tape to keep bigger pieces of paper attached to the boards. So when you get over a certain size of paper, or if it's a loose piece of paper like this, you're gonna wanna tape it down. Because we'll be using lots of watercolor, it can cause the paper to buckle, and that makes life much harder. The color starts to pool. So what we do is we stretch our paper first onto this board. And I'm gonna show you how to do that later on. I love my spray bottle and I use it all the time during painting and also to just wet my paper down sometimes too. If I just want like a light coating, just a gentle, if the paper's a little bit thinner, maybe you don't wanna saturate it with your foam brush. Maybe you just wanna give it a nice light coating of water using a spray bottle. This is super fun to use as well once you have ink or paint on your paper, you can spray water on and it will affect the paint that you've already put down. So it has lots of different uses. And also paper towel. Use it all the time to put my brushes on, to clean my brushes, to mop up messes that I make, which happen all the time. And also to remove some of the medium as I'm working. It's a great tool to have on hand all the time. It's always really nice to have a pencil nearby, whether it's for taking notes or doing a quick little gestural sketch on the side in one of your sketchbooks on another piece of paper. I personally don't tend to use it on the paper that I'm going to be painting on because I feel like it confines me a little bit to something. So I like to do a little sketch to the side, what we call thumbnail sketches as an indication of what I'm going to paint or a quick layout. But you know, when you're first starting, it's absolutely fine if you want to do a layout on your paper to begin with, if you feel like it will give you more confidence. It's just nice to have a pencil around. So pop it with your paintbrushes. What I suggest for anyone who's never picked up a paintbrush before, it's, you know, it's overwhelming. You've got, which paintbrush do I use first? What colors am I gonna pick? Your homework is to gather your basic supplies and get your workstation set up. Once that's done, I want you to take some time to get familiar with your materials and then add something into the mix. When you're feeling confident, just get something on the paper. That's where you gotta start.